All night I have slept with you next to the sea on the island. Wild and sweet you were between pleasure and sleep, between fire and water. Perhaps very late our dreams joined at the top or at the bottom, up above like branches moved by a common wind, down below like red roots that touch. Perhaps your dream drifted from mine and through the dark sea was seeking me as before when you did not yet exist, when without sighting you I sailed by your side and your eyes sought what now bread, wine, love and anger I heap upon you because you are the cup that was waiting for the gifts of my life. I have slept with you all night long while the dark earth spins with the living and the dead. And on waking suddenly in the midst of the shadow, my arm encircled your waist. Neither night nor sleep could separate us. I have slept with you, and on waking, your mouth, come from your dream, gave me the taste of earth, of seawater, of seaweed, of the depths of your life. And I received your kiss, moistened by the dawn, as if it came to me from the sea that surrounds us. She, being brand new, and you know, consequently a little stiff, I was careful of her, and having thoroughly oiled the universal joint, tested my gas, felt of her radiator, made sure her springs were okay, I went right to it, flooded the carburetor, cranked her up, slipped the clutch, and then somehow got into reverse. She kicked. What the hell? Next minute, I was back in neutral, tried, and again, slowly, barely, nudging my lever right. Oh, and her gears being an A1 shape passed from low through second and a high like grease lightning. Just as we turned the corner of Divinity Avenue, I touched the accelerator and give her the juice good. It was the first ride and believe I, we was happy to see how nice she acted right up to the last minute. Coming back down by the public gardens, I slammed on the internal expansion and external contracting brakes. Both at once and brought Oliver trembling to a dead stand.
The ambulance men touched her cold body, lifted it, heavy as iron, onto the stretcher, tried to close the mouth, closed the eyes, tied the arms to the sides, moved a caught strand of hair as if it mattered, saw the shape of her breasts flattened by gravity under the sheet, carried her as if it were she down the steps. These men were never the same. They went out afterwards as they always did for a drink or two, but they could not meet each other's eyes. Their lives took a turn. One had nightmares, strange pains, impotence, depression. One did not like his work, his wife looked different, his kids, even death seemed different to him, a place where she would be waiting. And one found himself standing at night in the doorway to a room of sleep, listening to a woman breathing, just an ordinary woman breathing. For the ones with no one to lead them, the one whose day has just begun, the one with a star in his cap, the cat with future feet, looking like a jack of hearts, mystic jack, zen jack with crazy Cohen's, Vegas jack who rolls the bones, the high roller behind the dealer, the one who'll shake them, the one who'll shake the ones unshaken, the fearless one, the one without bullshit, the stud with the straightest answer, the one with blazing words for guns, the distance runner with the word to pass, the night rider with the urgent message, the man from La Mancha riding bareback, the one who bears the great tradition and breaks it. 
The mysterious stranger who comes and goes, the jack of hearts who speaks out in the time of the ostrich, the one who sees the ostrich, the one who sees what the ostrich sees in the sand, the one who digs the mystery and stands in the corner smiling like a jack of hearts at the ones with no one to lead them, the ones with their eyes in the sands, the sand that runs to the glass, the ones who don't want to look at what's going down around them, the shut-eye ones who wish that someone else would seize the day, that someone else would tell them which way up and which way out and whom to hate and whom to love like big jack groovy jack the jack of light sainted jack who had the revelations and spoke the poem of apocalypse poet jack with the light pack who travels by himself and leaves the ladies smiling dharma jack with the beatitudes drunk on a bus addressing everyone the silent ones with the frozen faces the ones with the wall street journal who never speak to strangers the ones that got lost in the shuffle and never drew the jack of hearts the one who turned them on who saved them from themselves the one who heals the hamlet in them the silent ham who never acts the dude on the corner in two-tone shoes who knows the name of the game and names his game. The kid who paints the fence. The boy who digs the treasure up. The boy with the beans on the beanstalk. The dandy man. The candy man. The one with the lollipops. The harlequin man who tells the tick-tock man to stuff it in front of the house that Jack built, behind the house that Jack built. Where sleeps the cock that crowed in the morn? Where sleeps the cow with the crumpled horn? Where sleeps the dude who kept the horse with the beautiful form and kissed the maiden all forlorn? The jack of the pack all tattered and torn? The one the queen keeps her eye on? Dark rider on a white horse after the apocalypse? Prophet stoned on the wheel of fortune? Sweet singer with harp half hid who speaks with the cry of cicadas? Who tells the tale too truly for the ones with no one to tell them the true tale of sound and fury. The jack of hearts who lays it out, who tells it as it is. The one who wears no watch, yet tells the time too truly and reads the knight of cups and knows himself. The knave of hearts, the jack of hearts, who stole the tarts of love and laughter. The jack who tells his dream to those with no one to dream it. The one who tells his dream to the hard-eyed innocents and lays it out for the blind hippie, the black dream, the white dream of the jack of hearts, whose skeleton is neither black nor white, the long dream, the dream of heads and hearts, the trip of hearts, the flip of hearts, that turns the hanged man right side up and saves the drowned sailor with the breath of love, the wet dream, the hard dream, the sweet dream of the deckhand on the tall ship sailing softly, black jack, yellow jack, the steeple jack, who sets the clock in the tower and sees the chimes of freedom flashing, his only watch within him, the high one, the turned on one, the tuned in one, the one who digs in the time of the ostrich and finds the sunstone of himself, the woman man, the whole man, who holds all worlds together when all is said and all is done in the wild eye, the wide eye of the jack of hearts who stands in a doorway closed in sun. Hath the rain a father, or who hath begotten the drops of dew? Adam, my child, my son, these very words you hear compose the fish and starlight of your untroubled dream. When you awake, my child, it shall all come true. Know that it was for you that all things were begun. Adam, my child, my son, Thus spoke our Father in heaven to his first fabled child, the Father of us all. And I, your Father, tell the words over again as innumerable men from ancient times have done. Tell them again in pain and to the empty air. Where you are, men speak a different mother tongue. 
Will you forget our games, our hide and seek and song? Child, it will be long before I see you again. Adam, there will be many hard hours, as an old poem says, hours of loneliness. I cannot ease them for you. They are our common lot. During them, like as not, you will dream of me. When you are crouched away in a strange closed closet, hiding from one who's it, and the dark crowds in, do not be afraid. Oh, if you can, believe in a father's love that you shall know someday. Think of the summer rain or seed pearls of the mist. Seeing the beaded leaf, try to remember me. From far away, I send my blessing out to circle the great globe. It shall reach you yet. The Smallest Fisherman The House of Fish Welcome. So reads a dolphin-shaped pennant flying from the white flagpole, announcing the home of the youngest, smallest fisherman on the island. Standing in the doorway, welcoming his early morning visitor, the blonde-haired fisherman looks far more like a small man with a serious mission than a six-year-old boy readying himself to play. After we come back from the pond, you might want to write about us, the little fisherman ventures to his tall visitor. I'll put on my rubber wading boots and we'll go. Will you help me with them? Sure. Sit down on this yellow chair. Uh, uh. There goes one. Ow, uh, uh. There goes the other. All set? Yes, yes, yes. With each yes, the little fisherman rubs one of the three silver fish hanging from a delicate chain around his neck. Occasional beams of dawn light set the three fish a shimmer. Hand in hand, the little fisherman and the tall rider stride through the deep grass sending droplets of dew spinning to all sides of them. Like men stepping on this ground for the first time, they leave deep footprints in the soaking grass. My boat is waiting for us just beyond the end of this dirt road, the fisherman assures the writer, and with that runs ahead into a grove of fir trees, fresh with the May morning air. As the writer hurries to catch up to his small friend, he nearly trips on a partially buried tree stump at the edge of a drop-off. What he sees, a few paces from the base of the hill, through the birches and maples, delights him. With ease and grace, the little fisherman writes a snub-nosed red rowboat slides it several feet along the ground into the water, places the oars in the oarlocks, and calls to his friend to climb in. In less than time, the red rowboat carries its two passengers to the center of the pond. The three silver fish sparkle and spit sun spray. The little blonde-haired fisherman sits in the bow, drenched by the warming dawn light. He knows, and the innumerable silver fish swimming by know, that there is no magic to it. True fishermen always catch light.
Something has ceased to come along with me. Something like a person. Something very like one. And there was no nobility in it or anything like that. Something was there like a one-year-old house, dumb as stone, while the near building sang like birds and laughed, understanding the pact they were to have with silence. But he neither sang nor laughed. He did not bless silence like bread with words. He did not forsake silence, but rather like a house in mourning, kept the eye turned in to watch the silence while the other houses like birds sang around him. And the breathing silence neither moved nor was still. I have seen stones, I have seen brick, but this house was made up of neither bricks nor stone but a house of flesh and blood, with flesh of stone and bricks for blood, a house of stones and blood in breathing silence with the other birds singing crazy on its chimneys. But this was silence. This was something else. This was hearing and speaking though he was a house drawn into silence. This was something religious in his silence, something shining in his quiet. This was different. This was altogether something else. Though he never spoke, this was something to do with death. And then slowly the eye stopped looking inward. The silence rose and became still. The look turned to the outer place and stopped, with the birds still shrilling around him. And as if he could speak, he turned over on his side with his one year red as a wound. He turned over as if he could be sorry for this. And out of his eyes, two great tears rolled like stones, and he died. I am cherry alive, the little girl sang. Each morning I am something new. I am apple, I am plum, I am just as excited as the boys who made the Halloween bang. I am tree, I am cat, I am blossom too. When I like, if I like, I can be someone new. Someone very old, a witch in a zoo. I can be someone else whenever I think who. And I want to be everything sometimes too. And the peach has a pit and I know that too. And I put it along with everything to make the grown-ups laugh whenever I sing. And I sing. It is true. It is untrue. I know. I know. The true is untrue. The peach has a pit. The pit has a peach. And both me may be wrong when I sing my song. But I don't tell the grown-ups because it is sad. And I want them to laugh just like I do. Because they grew up and forgot what they knew. And they are sure I will forget it someday too. They are wrong, they are wrong when I sang my song. I knew, I knew. I'm red, I'm gold, I'm green, I'm blue. I will always be me, I will always be new. September rain falls on the house. In the failing light, the old grandmother sits in the kitchen with the child beside the little marble stove, reading the jokes from the almanac, laughing and talking to hide her tears. She thinks that her equinoctial tears and the rain that beats on the roof of the house were both foretold by the almanac, but only known to her grandmother. 
iron kettle sings on the stove. She cuts some bread and says to the child, It's time for tea now. But the child is watching the tea kettle's small, hard tears dance like mad on the hot black stove, the way the rain must dance on the house. Tidying up, the old grandmother hangs up the clever almanac on its string. Bird-like, the almanac hovers half open above the child, hovers above the old grandmother and her teacup full of dark brown tears. She shivers and says she thinks the house feels chilly and puts more wood in the stove. It was to be, says the marvel stove. I know what I know, says the almanac. With crayons, the child draws a rigid house and a winding pathway. Then the child puts in a man with buttons like tears and shows it proudly to the grandmother. But secretly, while the grandmother busies herself about the stove, the little moons fall down like tears from between the pages of the almanac. Into the flower bed the child has carefully placed in the front of the house. Time to plant tears, says the almanac. The grandmother sings to the marvelous stove and the child draws another inscrutable house. The Wind Hover to Christ Our Lord I caught this morning morning's minion, kingdom of daylight's dauphin, dappled dawn-drawn falcon, in his riding of the rolling level underneath him steady air, and striding high there, how he rung upon the rein of a wimpling wing in his ecstasy. Then off, off forth on swing, as a skate's heel sweeps smooth on a bow bend, the hurl and gliding rebuffed the big wind. My heart in hiding stirred for a bird, the achieve of, the mastery of the thing. Brute beauty and valor and act, O oh, air, pride, plume, here buckle. And the fire that breaks from thee then, a billion times told lovelier, more dangerous, O oh, my chevalier. No wonder of it. Sheer plod makes plow down cillion shine, and blue bleak embers, ah, my dear, fall, gall themselves, and gash gold vermilion. I have met them at close of day, coming with vivid faces from counter or desk among gray 18th century houses. I have passed with a nod of the head 
or polite, meaningless words, or have lingered a while and said polite, meaningless words, and thought before I had done of a mocking tale or a jibe to please a companion around the fire at the club, being certain that they and I but lived where motley is worn. All changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. That woman's days were spent in ignorant goodwill, her nights in argument until her voice grew shrill. What voice more sweet than hers when young and beautiful she rode to Harriers? This man had kept a school and rode our winged horse. This other, his helper and friend, was coming into his force. He might have won fame in the end, so sensitive his nature seemed, so daring and sweet his thought. This other man I had dreamed a drunken, vainglorious lout. He had done most bitter wrong to some who are near my heart. Yet I number him in the song. He too has resigned his part in the casual comedy. He too has been changed in his turn, transformed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. Hearts with one purpose alone through summer and winter seem enchanted to a stone to trouble the living stream. The horse that comes from the road, the rider, the birds that range from cloud to tumbling cloud, minute by minute they change. A shadow of cloud on the stream changes minute by minute. A horse hoof slides on the brim and a horse plashes within it. The long-legged moor hens dive and hens to moorcocks call. Minute by minute they live, the stones in the midst of all. Too long a sacrifice can make a stone of the heart. Oh, when may it suffice? That is heaven's part, our part, to murmur name upon name as a mother names her child when sleep at last has come on limbs that had run wild. What is it but nightfall? No, no, not night, but death. Was it needless death after all? For England may keep faith for all that is done and said. We know their dream, enough to know they dreamed and are dead. And what if excess of love bewildered them till they died? I write it out in a verse. McDonough and McBride and Connolly and Pierce. Now and in time to be, wherever green is worn, are changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty is born.
Das Grosse La Lula. Crock Lock Wapsi. Sememeni. Sayo Kronto. Profiplo. Bipsi Bafsi. Hula Lemmy. Quasti Basti Bo. La Lu, La Lu, La Lu, La Lu, La. Hontra Reru Miramente. Zasku Zes Ru. Ente pente laolente crequa pufsi lu la lu la lu la lu la lu la simurai quotes multi pempu tsutsu tsunkum cry marjamar dos quempu lempu siri suri sai la lu la lu la lu la lu la I should like to relate this memory, but it is so faded now. Scarcely anything is left because it lies far off in the years of my early manhood. A skin as if made of jasmine. That night in August. Was it August? That night? I can just barely remember the eyes. They were, I think, blue. Ah, yes, blue. A sapphire blue. And thickest and kindest of ring, and all one, two, three rings are cake, and everything is protected by cellophane against anything because nothing really exists.
my being is a dark verse that will take you with itself to the dawn of eternal bloomings and growings. I sighed you in this verse. I grafted you in this verse onto the tree and the water and the fire. Life, perhaps, is a long street where a woman walks by with a shopping bag every day. Life, perhaps, is a rope by which a man hangs himself from a branch. Life, perhaps, is a child coming back from school. Life, perhaps, is lighting a cigarette in the lazy gap between two fornications, or the puzzled state of a man who lifts his hat and says to another passerby with a meaningless smile, good morning. Life, perhaps, is that barred moment when my glance dissolves in your pupils and there is a feeling in this that I will mix with the perception of the moon and the reception of the darkness. In a room that is as big as a loneliness, my heart that is as big as a love looks at its simple excuses for happiness, at the beautiful death of the flowers in pots, at the seedling that you planted in our garden, and at the song of birds that sing as much as a window. Ah, this is my share. This is my share. My share is a sky that is taken away with the pulling of a curtain. My share is going down a deserted staircase and joining something. Is decay and exile. My share is a sorrowful walk in the garden of memories and mourning a voice that tells me, I love your hands. I will plant my hands. I will grow. I know, I know, I know. And swallows will lay eggs in the cup of my ink-stained hands. of two twin cherries and will stick dahlia petals on my fingernails. There is a street where boys who were in love with me, still with the same unkempt hairs and slender necks and thin legs, think about the innocent smiles of a girl who went with the wind one night. There is a street which my heart has stolen from the neighborhoods of my infancy. The voyage of a volume in the line of time and impregnating the dry line of time with a volume, the volume of a conscious image that comes back from the feast of a mirror. And that's how someone dies and someone remains. No diver will catch a pearl in a humble stream that ends in a pit. I know a little sad fairy who lives in an ocean and she plays her heart slowly on a wooden flute. A little sad fairy who dies of a kiss every night and who will be born again with a kiss at dawn.
Had I the heavens embroidered cloths Enwrought with golden and silver light The blue and the dim and the dark cloths Of night and light and the half-light I would spread the cloths under your feet but I, being poor, have only my dreams. I have spread my dreams under your feet. Tread softly, because you tread on my dreams.
understand that when the dark one comes, when the dark one comes blowing the sea green conch, past drops away, past drops away, and I follow. Green, green is my love, green wind, green branches, boat on the sea, horse on the Sierra. Shadow on her waist, she dreams on her terrace, green flesh, green hair, eyes of cold silver. Green, Green is my love. Beneath the gypsy moon, things see her that she cannot see. Green, green is my love. Great stars of rhyme come with the fish of shadow to open the road of dawn. The fig tree scrapes the wind with the rasp of its branches. The mountain, a thieving cat. Bristles its brittle spikes, but who will come, and whence? Immobile on her terrace, green flesh, green hair, she dreams of the bitter sea. My friend, I want to trade my horse for your house, my saddle for your mirror. My knife for your blanket, friend. I come bleeding from the gates of Cabra. My boy, if I could, I would agree. But I am no longer I, nor is my house my house. My friend, I want to die decently in my bed of steel, if it can be. With sheets from Holland, can't you see my wound from my throat to my breast? Three hundred dark roses your white shirt wears. Your blood smells and oozes about your sash, but I am no longer I, nor is my house my house. At least let me climb to the high terraces. Let me go up. Do you hear? As far as the green terraces, balconies of the moon, where the water sounds. Now the two friends ascend to the high terraces, leaving a trail of blood, leaving a trail of tears. Lanterns on the roofs of tin are trembling. A thousand. Tambourines of crystal wound the dawn. Green, green is my love. Green wind, green branches. The two friends ascended. The long wind left in the mouth a rare flavor of gall, of mint and sweet basil. Tell me, my friend, where is she? Where is your bitter girl? How often she waited. How 
often she would wait, fresh face, black hair, on this green terrace, in the face of the cistern, the gypsy girl sways, green flesh, green hair, eyes of cold silver, an icicle of moon supports her on the water. The night grew intimate like a little plaza. Drunken civil guards beat on the door. Green, green is my love, boat on the sea, horse on the Sierra. If you could walk as softly as a rose walks into spring, your heart would cease to beat. Your petals would shudder, raindrop by raindrop, into the ease of the sun. Poetry begins in despair and ends in wisdom. Poetry begins in delight and ends in wisdom. The holiness of that charge, teaching, love. Thank you. 
glittering girl with apple blossom in her hair. Who called me by my name and ran and faded through the Till time and times are done, the silver apples of the moon. The golden 